I think uh, we can make a start. The recording has started now. Yeah. OK, guys, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can see my screen here. Everyone, Rajit, you can confirm again. Yeah, Umesh. Yeah. You can see my screen. Yes. yes, yes. So guys, welcome. Welcome to D365, D365 uh, User Group India. And uh, we welcome you here in this group and thank you very much for joining this uh, today on Sunday evening. I know this is a, a personal time of everyone, but I appreciate you uh, care for the upskilling yourself, care for the community. That's why you are all are here. OK, so uh, today we have Umesh Pandit, our speaker, so he'll be starting uh, his session very soon. I just want to start this session with uh, a brief introduction about the group and uh, about the volunteers here who are working uh, to make all this possible and then we'll start the session uh, with Umesh and uh, we'll finish the session with what's coming next after this session like what's coming uh, after three weeks uh, the next session and uh, how can you contribute to this uh, community okay and for your information, this session will be recorded and uploaded on our YouTube channel. So um, you can also watch it later or people who can't attend today, they can also watch. Right, so this group which we started two months back. And uh, this is one of the group basically like now there are many groups uh, who are working to share the knowledge of D365. Um, globally and this is uh, uh i think uh, one of the largest group in india right now and why we are doing it but definitely we want to stay connected for the latest technology like you know the technology is changing every day d365 changing every day right all these um, uh, new tools which you were not there before like it was just crm and erp Right, and now there are hundreds of new platform, new technologies every day being launched by Microsoft. Right, so we have to stay connected. Right, so it's also a great platform to know your community who all are working in your um, network. Right, and also in the background, it's you're making sure that you are shaping your career. Right, it is being taken care of by itself when you are. Uh, updated with the latest technology, right? And how are we doing it? Like we are doing these sessions. We are using the other technology platforms like YouTube or Twitter, LinkedIn. And also we are creating the reusable assignments. We will be recording the session, we'll be sharing across all the platforms, right? So not only you, rather like anyone globally can view these sessions. Right, so uh, this is our volunteer group who is uh, uh, increasing in numbers day by day. We started with Rachid Garg, he's a founder member. Uh, with Paresh and Rahul, I joined uh, just uh, last month. And then today we are also welcoming our new volunteer, Umesh Pandit, Young Dynamic and uh, D365. And uh, expert, he's uh, so we'll hear from him directly uh, what he's up to and what he's doing nowadays. And fortunately, he's also the presenter today. So after this slide, I'll hand over to him so he can introduce himself and uh, 
and also his session definitely. Right and. Uh, how to join the group? Definitely you guys must have joined the group. By now, if not, you can scan this QR code to join our LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube channel. And try to share it more and more in your friends and communities. And uh, Rachit will also be sharing the link. If you can't uh, scan this QR code, just click on those links and uh, join the groups. Any question you have, you can post in the chat group here. Uh, we'll be trying. We'll be trying to reply side by side. Rachit and our uh, Paresh is here. I'll be here. So now this is the poetry I hand over to Umesh. Umesh, please introduce yourself. And you can also start the session. OK, sure. Thank, thank you, Satya, you. for the brief introduction. And uh, thank you all uh, for joining the session today. And uh, I again, once again, uh, welcome you all uh, for this session. This session is uh, morely uh, focused on Azure, uh, on Dynamics, basically how Dynamics is connected, interconnected, and how the application is tightly uh, built up. Before I start with this session, I will introduce myself. I'm having uh, 12 years of experience into finance and operations, like not completely 12 years into finance and operations, but in Dynamics overall, I started in uh, 2008. Uh, around 2008 and uh, with uh, Navision actually, Navision as a uh, developer, and then gradually changed my gears to uh, gears to AX, which is uh, AX 2009, that, those days, and then back and forth like 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, .0, and you know, now finance and operations. So all those kind of uh, uh, versions I have been working on. And uh, in between, uh, in 2013, I found that uh, there are a couple of uh, infrastructures which is actually moving on cloud. That time I was not aware that it will be a drastic change in, uh, in, in Azure uh, for finance and operations also. So everything actually backed up by Azure nowadays, uh, if we talk about cloud. So that's where I am at a heading. I'm a solution architect on Azure as well as on finance and operations. So if you have any questions, definitely you can post it on group as well as on the uh, chat over here. And if we are having time, we will definitely uh, get the uh, un question answered over here, here itself. If not, if there is a time scarcity, we will do it on the forum. OK, so let's the ball rolling. Um, I will just share my screen today. Hope everyone can see my screen now. And I'm clearly audible. Yes, Umesh. I, yep. OK, thank you. So um, when we start about uh, the dynamics finance and operation and Azure, what is the interconnection? So when we talk about anything like your Office 365 IDs nowadays you are using, it's actually pay as you go. OK, so pay as you go means you monthly pay your sessions and then continue it. Now what happens with this is if this once it is a subscription based is actually heading towards uh, the uh, SaaS like software as a uh, service. Now same uh, same technology was picked up by Dynamics. So when you use Dynamics as on cloud on an on on the basis of subscription, it is actually referring to SaaS model of Azure. That means software as services. Now, in this session, we will understand about the uh, list of services. Uh, we will talk about uh, the LCS. We will also talk about uh, the Azure automation, how we can uh, do the automations. Uh, we will also talk about the Azure connectors, project settings, SharePoint, how SharePoint is integrated with LCS or Azure, how it is backed up by Azure, and we will also see uh, the Azure DevOps and one box automation followed by the question answer session. Okay, so this is I am already uh, talked about it. Uh, most of uh, most of the people who here in the uh, group as a presenter uh, or the uh, moderator in the group and the attendees are already connected with me. Those who are not connected, please follow or connect with me on the LinkedIn with this particular QR code. Okay, so when we talk about Azure, 
uh, Azure is actually public cloud. And when we talk about Dynamics, Dynamics has uh, two uh, separate clouds actually within it. Um, before uh, giving you an example, I will just share the uh, LCS project. So this is my LCS window, if you see. Uh, now in this, we have the uh, produc production and UAD. So I will just use my notepad as well. So why I said we have uh, two clouds. So we see we have uh, T2, the two tier environments, and then we have the tier one environments. So tier one is backed up by Azure cloud. And this is actually T2 or prod. T2 is uh, tier two, T1 is tier one. This is also called cloud hosted cloud hosted uh, environments. And these are actually hosted with the help of the Azure connector and backed up by the Azure cloud. The prod or the T1, T2, T3 uh, environments are actually hosted on Microsoft, Microsoft cloud. Obviously this cloud is Azure, but this is not accessible. Okay, so T2 and above environments are completely not accessible. There are few features which Microsoft is uh, releasing day by day, like uh, you can access uh, the SSMS, that is your uh, SQL servers uh, in read-only mode or in edit mode, wherever uh, the request type is requested, they will be giving you access for eight, eight hours and then the uh, the access will be revoked. So that's the kind of uh, security Microsoft is providing. But on definitely on production you can't do it. But I will show how there are uh, there are some features which can be used on production also for setting up the queries or uh, that sort of uh, mechanism. Um, if I am able to open my one of the uh, production environment. Let's see how it goes and uh, how the time permits. So I will go back to the slides. So when we talk about uh, the Azure, Azure as we talk about it is in uh, public uh, cloud and then this offers, the Azure offers the feature called access control. How the access control is there? When we talk about the uh, customers, those who are actually hosting cloud hosted environments. So when we talk cloud hosted environments, the cloud hosted environments resides in the, uh, we have to click on the LCS. Once we click on the LCS, we go to the project. This is the project URL and this is our, uh, this is our project uh, ID. So this will be changing uh, as and when uh, the customer onboards. This will be the unique number uh, giving to the project, uh, uh, assigned to the project actually. Okay, so based on that, it, you will get it. So I was talking about, you can go, go to the hamburger sign, click on this, and then you click on the cloud hosted environment. So once you click on the cloud, cloud hosted environments, it will show you the list of uh, cloud hosted environments. Here I have a big list. Okay, all this is in uh, internal. Uh, okay, so this is all cloud hosted environments. The nomenclature can depend. Then again, based on your uh, versions, it will show up over here. Now we will, we must be wondering how this is connected, or what happens. There are a couple of uh, scenarios when where I have addressed that you are a partner company. Now, for the first time, you want to onboard the customer. How to onboard the customer for the first time? So, the oh, basic need. Are there? Sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, I think. No, carry, carry on, Umesh. Oh, sorry. So, when we talk about uh, the very first time of the onboarding, I know I am. Uh, going apart from Azure, but I will come to that point. But this is more important uh, topic or questions people my, uh, is asking nowadays. So first thing is you need you need one Office 365 ID of an client. It can be any ID like admin, 
or office at the rate let's suppose your uh, client name is xyz xyz.com okay so this id is needed when this id is need you have once you order once you order the subscription from microsoft this id should be shared to the microsoft guy okay so whether this has the mailbox or not remember mailbox is not an important the important is the id if you have the id go ahead and log into log into lcs portal and once you log into the lcs portal with this id you will ask to accept the licenses of the lcs once you say yes you will be entered and welcomed and then you will have to create a project this project will be implementation okay if you are creating the prospect so that is also possible but over here you cannot create the um, you cannot create prospect you you cannot actually create a uh, cloud hosted environment cloud hosted environment you cannot create you cannot connect you cannot uh, cannot can't create cloud hosted environment or you can't um, create you can't connect the word is connect you want can't connect the uh, azure connector okay now i will just show up that azure connector so there are a couple of steps i was discussing about the uh, onboarding of the customers this is the four important things which to be needed now once you create a implementation project after that there are uh, there are more questions about how we can connect this connector so for the first time you need to authorize this whether you are a partner or a customer you should authorize this once you authorized what will happen in the back end see on the top it is giving the consent so once i authorize my authorization is already completed in the authorization in the back end what will happen it will log into it will log into azure portal and create a ws uh, fd uh, the complete word i am not sure i will just give you uh, i will show it on the azure it will create a user with this plus it will also create a resource group okay that is also i will give you i will just show you okay so once this is done you will be able to authorize the consent so i will come to this i will go back to the previous slides i think i made you clear that what all things are required for onboarding a customer so this is the primarily thing which are already uh, always needed actually now when we talk about azure azure is actually very secure and it gives the access control feature and it allows uh, the complete restriction of the cloud hosted environment as well as it also restricts the access to your production environment okay it is already attached with your azure active directory so based on the roles you will be able to control your permission uh on the lcs and then outside the lcs also on the office 365 tenant now when it comes to uh, sorry when it comes to the uh, access control we can also enable people restrict giving having the restricted access to cloud hosted environment wherein a customer wants just to have the internal ip okay so as we know as we all know that whenever we create a azure system azure vm through the lcs or outside the lcs we get two ips so one ip is uh, the public ip the second ip is the internal ip that is your private ip so how we can actually log in with the help of the uh, internal ip that is your uh, private ip and we can actually restrict the access of the public ips so how we can do that we will uh, look into the session soon but this is how the security works even if the customer is demanding that no i don't want to expose the 
public IP to the uh, to my developers. They need they can only connect with the uh, internal IPs. Then that is also a possible case. Now we will talk about the uh, okay. So we will talk about the quick setup. So when we talk about dynamics uh, in relation with the finance uh, in relation with the Azure, once you have are connected with the Azure connector, uh, when you try to uh, create the virtual machine, it is very quickly. Once you start the uh, once the environment is queued, it changes the states to deploying and within six to eight hours, it will be deployed state. In tier two, it is much faster. In production, that is more faster than the tier two. But on the tier one, there are it takes four to five hours. But Microsoft is working on an uh, on an uh, deployment wherein it reduces the time. But when and we do talk about the individual environment through the Azure, it is within seconds. It it triggers the environment within thirty seconds. Like once you click OK and things are validated, it will create a virtual machine instantly within 30 seconds so that i have experimented whether it is an windows or linux so let's not talk about that uh, wherein there is no dynamics so we'll move forward so that's more on the quick setup same way if you want to have the hybrid cloud also if you want to uh, uh, if you want to merge your local uh, data centers or local office premises or uh, virtual machines into uh, the dynamics yes you can load the virtual machines on the uh, on the local hardware also, but the overhead overhead expenses are more. That's the reason people even migrate. Initially, they set up with the uh, set up the session, uh, set set up the virtual machines within their data centers, and later they move to uh, cloud. So that's we have the proven examples in Columbus itself. So don't worry, we uh, we have done lots of projects within that. Even uh, uh, there are teammates who has done uh, in my company. They have joined the session. So I think Bharat has done some of the uh, good projects. So uh, I, I can take that uh, uh, feedback from him if you want. Then when we talk about the quick setup, we also talk about the developers where developer wants to have the integration. So. The second thing is integration is also possible very quickly. And then there is no worry about the maintaining the on premises databases because we have the hybrid cloud. OK, so don't we don't have to worry on any of your uh, databases, which is there in on premises. We can definitely uh, roll out the Azure SQL. The cost of implementation drastically it decreases. And when we talk about the custom links, we don't have to create custom links as and when we require it for the order to expose or something like uh, we might be doing some integration. And this is easy to adapt. The dynamics itself on Azure is easy to adapt. Now we will go back uh, to we will move forward with the uh, next uh, topic, which is built for each other. So Azure and dynamics when you actually work with Azure, uh, work with Dynamics on LCS, you will see that there is seamless access, seamless access on the uh, on the on the way you deploy, you manage, you build the application. It is all seamless, reliable on Azure, and you think that it is actually built for each other. Okay, is that we say uh, there was a famous ad which talks about made for each other. It is built for each other. Okay, so basically Azure offers an impressive hybrid cloud for enterprises for all sizes adopting the Dynamics 365. You must heard about that recent there. Uh, you must have known about the Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was actually uh, the Coke which you drink was actually primarily on the SAP uh, SAPs, but uh, they actually implemented, I think, in 2013, they implemented uh, uh, 2012, uh, 20, 2009, and then migrated to 2012. And recently, the they are actually changing the complete uh, ecosystem to Dynamics. Okay, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations built on Azure. Okay, so that's the beauty wherein uh, the complexity is reduced, eased out, and they are built for each other so that you can actually host the dynamics on Azure as well as you can each you can actually use the tools which are available like DevOps, 
like your uh, build automations, like your uh, automations within the Azure, all those can be used. Even uh, you can use the Power Platform. OK, so let's move forward with the next slide, which gives you the access control. I have discussed this access control, but this gives you the more control wherein I talked about the uh, uh, tier two environments wherein you have the access control wherein once you need based on your ID, it will give you the permission. Again, you need to add your IP also so that you can access the databases. So that's the that's the level of security it has. That's the level of logging technology it has. And and also Microsoft is working in the back end wherein it can actually have the seamless access on the Azure Active Directory wherein you have the RBAC roles, which is already there in Azure. And once you have it, you will be seamlessly accessing the LCS environments also. So I think uh, something will come up soon. OK, so park your questions uh, uh, and you can start uh, asking questions also if you have on the group and seamlessly we will give you the uh, solutions or answers to that. Same way it has the encryption. So Dynamics is on Azure is fully encrypted. OK, so when we talk about the databases in the back end, when we talk about the Azure systems, the local disk C drive is also encrypted. It also follows the rules of GDPR, which is talks about the general data protection regulations, uh, and it's the most trusted cloud. Even the US government says so. That means even the US government is having the uh, Azure as their uh, hosting partners. OK, so when we talk about Dynamics, Dynamics stores the sensitive data of your customer. Um, your uh, client information is stored, your payment gateways, everything is stored within that. So that should be more secure than any other applications. OK, so it also has more than 18 services, which is covered on an FedRAP high authorizations, and it also have more than 70 compliance covering, which is actually again governed by the GDPR. Uh, GDPR, basically the general data protection regulation. OK, so let's talk about the backup, how the backup is taken. When we talk about the LCS, we have seen that we take the backups very. Uh, we need to refresh our uh, pre production from production or we need to refresh our UAT from production. That is very easy in earlier days. In nowadays also people, those who are coming from uh, the 2012 background, they know what is the pain. Uh, they have, but in in Dynamics, it is very quite simple and very it's it's in just in few clicks. No need to enter any uh, database. No need to back up anything. Just click say move movement and say press export. That's it. OK, so that database will be saved on uh, your um, LCS. OK, so um, artificial intelligence is is something which is uh, coming in, uh, in in most of the uh, dynamics features if you see i think uh, uh, rachit also took some sessions around the order management uh, the order man intelligence or order management is based on your artificial intelligence i'm not sure whether he has taken or he might be taking sessions but i have seen somewhere that he were he, he was doing something, but he will throw some lights at the end of the session, surely. And uh, the Power BI, obviously we know how uh, how people are ext extensively using Power BI reports and uh, it's it's uh, usability display uh, the the systems, the 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 kind of uh, the kind of visuals it presents is actually lovely and management, uh, the top CTO, CIO level, people like that, uh, the CFO level, people like that uh, functionality. They they can within within seconds, they can know that their business is going down or or up with the help of the visualizations, whether it is a red mark, that means it is uh, saying that uh, it is it is actually a red zone, uh, wherein the business is going down or somewhere like that. Same way, in Power BI, what we see that it can actually collaborate the data from different sources, not only from one sources, it is different sources. And then we have lots of other functionality like we have the uh, data lake, data bricks, uh, the uh, the uh, Azure factory, data factory. We have not, uh, uh, we, we are not sp uh, speaking on that, but actually it involves the Azure, all, the, all those are built on Azure. So, uh, we will move ahead and talk about the list of services which are present. Okay, so any questions till now? 
uh, should I continue? Are we all good? Um, Umesh, there are two questions uh, which we have answered, but would be good to get your views. One is from Kishore: Is connecting to LCS only the office, only with office account? If customer is using Google as their email domain, should customers create office account? No, that is not needed. If you are having uh, uh, G Suite, if you are having any other account, that is also welcomed. You just need to sign up for the uh, Outlook.com. Uh, just go there, sign up, and put your ID and just the password. You should be able to get into the uh, Microsoft account with your G Suite ID also. Okay, so anybody having any issues, I can again give you the uh, demos on that as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, second question. Yeah. So just to clarify, so do we need to create an on Microsoft account to get our LCS provisioned? Uh, yeah, that can also be used, uh, but the recommended is to have your uh, the verified domain. So let's suppose I have I am owning a domain called Columbus Noida at uh, at uh, Columbus Noida in micro uh, on Microsoft.com. So that is actually on Microsoft.com the Azure Active Directory, but it would be good if I get the verified domain as columbusnoida.com. So that is more convenient to use, but nobody will restrict you to use uh, Columbus Noida uh, on Microsoft.com. Okay, so that is also welcomed. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, these were the questions. Uh, you can continue with the session. Thanks. Okay, so let's move on the uh, list of services. So I know most of the people will uh, people are already aware what are the services which are being used, but I will discuss now that uh, it is uh, about the project settings. This is the project settings which I have. Um, I will just quickly share my again uh, DLCS and let's go to the project settings. So I will explain this because I know most of the uh, developer people, de uh, development people, uh, technical people, rather I would say, and the functional people, they will say, okay, this will be managed by the administrator people or an infrastructure or the project manager. But this is how it can be. If you want to change the uh, implementation uh, project name, definitely you can change it from here. Okay, so these are the uh, tokens which have been. Uh, I will. I have to renew it. So it's. It's. I have marked it in the, the project that DevOps uh, token will expire on this particular time. Now, when we talk about the organization and the ownership, this talks about that who all are actually partners, who all are actually the customers. So if you can see, it has the mix. Like Microsoft also sorry is a to, partner. Sorry to interrupt. Screen is not visible. OK, is that the case uh, with everyone? No, we can see. Uh, sorry, can you rejoin? We could possible? see list of services uh, slide. OK, OK, we OK, no problem. Probably. Yeah, I will just reshare it again. Yeah, it is visible now. Uh, I can see the project setting. Yes, OK, so yeah. this is project settings and I'm on the organization and the ownership. Vivek, can you see that? No, uh, yeah. I'll rejoin. I'll rejoin. I think there is okay, some issue. Okay, 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 no problem. Okay, so this is absolutely needed when we talk uh, about the Azure connector. This will come again, so we can skip this, and then we have the uh, SharePoint online uh, library. So if you see that without this, also I can trigger the tier two involvement, but this is. Have a, we, we can have the good idea to actually point to the SharePoint uh, URL. Normally what happens, I will just uh, quickly open my. Give me a minute. I will just open the uh, office.com. OK, so here we go. We have the office.com and we have the uh, admin portal as well as we have the SharePoint. So I will show the SharePoint. This is how you go to the SharePoint, wherein you have this uh, particular SharePoint URL. We need to map it. So it is the auth.sharepoint.com and then the sites and then example. So I will. What we have to do, you have to go to this uh, office.com and click on the SharePoint link. It will open my default SharePoint website. So what I will do, I will create this for my project. So I will just say 
uh, it is the team site and I will say it as a LCS uh, project. OK, so it is just verifying the name. I will. Yeah, this is my URL which is available. OK, so I'll just copy this and say. Uh, OK, so only. OK, I will just make it as a private and say next. OK, so I will add my. Uh, Additional owners, I will add my manager and my colleague Bharat Sahu and team member as Tosir. Oh. Yes, he's there. So I'll just finish. OK, so this is created as we know that I have already created a URL. I got the URL, so I'll just come here and say. Save it. OK, so what it is doing it, it is actually verifying the URL. And the access and once this is done, it will pop up that the success, the connection was successful. Perfect, so it is see it got. Uh, successfully created saved. Sorry, this is taking some time. OK, so in the meanwhile, it is uh, just thinking. Uh, do we have any questions? Yeah, so right now it has been mapped and it is showing that SharePoint online site is this. OK, same way when we talk about the Azure DevOps. So I think that Azure DevOps might not be there. Yeah, it is already there and the token is not configured. So what you can do, um, you can just say change. And you might see the token. So from here, what you can do, um, go to this project. Open it in the new uh, tab within the same uh, browser. So that, oh, so you don't have the access. OK, so might be the case that I have not uh, figured it out, but uh, this is how you do it. I will just explain this. So once you open the uh, IUR domain, uh, this particular uh, visualstudio.com. OK, go to the visualstudio.com like this. OK, and sign in. With the uh, proper account. Yeah, it is getting up. OK, so I don't want to create the uh, organization right now since we have already we are already having the uh, DevOps settings, but I'm just telling you that this is how you do it. So let's suppose we have already created one. I'll just go here. And I will talk about this personal access token. This is called the PAT token. I'm that sure that uh, many of the many of you might be knowing what this is, but I will sure. Uh, show you that how it can be accessed. Let me go to this. Oh, I think there is some uh, access information. Maybe. Leave it. OK, so this uh, personal access token can be uh, gained through. You have to go to the Azure DevOps. After going to Azure DevOps, there will be a um, user user ID and then click on that and there like this. You have the the partner organization and the login details over here. You will see the uh, token. OK, just click on that and it will be. Uh, you can actually choose the uh, one year or two year validation and then paste it here. And obviously you need to save that uh, token so that it is uh, it is not deleted. OK, so otherwise once you have forgotten or if you have gone through that, uh, if you have closed the DevOps uh, site, you cannot get the same token again. You have to reset it. OK. OK, so now we will go ahead and uh, go back and talk about the connector. So this is important. 
when we talk about the connector okay so how these connectors can be established so what we have to do we have to go to uh, portal.issue.com we to go to home and uh, we need to select our uh, organization uh, subscription sorry and my subscription is oh this is very difficult uh, i will go to this and from here i will go to the uh, subscription zubair is my manager if you can see uh, how this subscription stands this is csp we are the csp partners of microsoft zubair is my manager uh, the developers manager not my manager but we are good friends and then it is for the gdc developers so th this is our internal which we have uh, which, we, which we have been doing it so like this you can also follow some of the nomenclatures in azure then um, i was talking about how you can go ahead and look for the uh, how you can set up this project uh, settings on the uh, Azure connector side. Remember, I have given you a indication that this is important. And once you log in uh, to Azure, you need to define, it will create in the uh, connector, it will create a user and the resource group. So go to this and then go to the uh, access control. So once you are here, what you have to do, you have to click on add, you need to provide the name. I will just copy the name. Let's suppose I have this as name. I will go one step back and try to show it. So I will go here and say the name. If I don't want to use name, I want to just say Umesh test. That is also possible. No problem. Name is uh, not uh, the mandatory term. The mandatory thing is the ID. Just copy this. Go to the uh, project settings, go here and say paste it and say uh, enable the ARM template. Now, if I click on next, it will just see whether I have this enabled and contributor role is there. So most of us miss this. So how this is created, I, I have already given you that this user is created when you authorize the project okay so you will get this created once you authorize it will create a user and the resource group so while you what you have to do this is already done but i will just show you you have to go to this uh, access control i am so in subscription we see access control and in active directory we see roles okay so don't confuse that if i have invited you as my uh, guest user in active directory i will gain access to subscription not the case so both are different things and both access are controls very separately go to add add the role and you can select the role as role as contributor and uh, i have already copied i will just say paste it and this will appear i will just say yes and say save so this is already there so it will just say failed because it's already exist okay so for you it will be green symbol and it will be added make sense okay so we will move ahead and say next now in the next there is uh, if the access is proper no need to download and upload I just say next it will now ask me to select the region so if i see the region central india north europe south india west india uh, west europe west uh, europe is already added two times if i want to select and say i want to go for the uh, east us and say connect it should connect it is having the same subscription no problem it will i'm just giving the a new uh, region so it should accept there is no uh, absolutely no issues having the lots of uh, subscriptions uh, see if if you can see we have lots of subscriptions different subscriptions as well as we have different regions for the same subscription also okay so you in your project you might see only one region why we have created different because columbus is a global company and it has people from central india people are from south india west india and even proper people are from Europe and uh, US as well. But this is created. Now this is this is not at a default. I can make it as default from here. Just select select the subscription, uh, the connector and say default. Okay. 
perfect so any questions around this authorization arm enabled and also you might see if this arm enabled is not configured it will throw the error so make sure that the arm uh, is enabled arm is stands for the azure uh, resource manager this is the template which might which microsoft uses to uh, to deploy the virtual machine yeah any questions Yes, Somesh, there are a few questions. We can take them. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a question from Sandeep. Is there any possibility to use different tenants Azure subscription on LCS? Different tenants? Uh, mm. Sandeep, would you like to unmute and uh, clarify if you want to add more details to this question? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, hi, Umesh. I'm Sandeep, actually. Yep. So I'm a technical uh, consultant. So yes. we have a scenario recently, actually, uh, where uh, uh, the uh, 360 license is on different tenant, and uh, they have uh, another tenant where uh, they have also subscription. So is there any possibility you, to use that a different tenant subscription on our LCS? I mean, just to make use of the existing subscription. Yes, that can be used. Uh, I know most of the people might be uh, thinking that this is not a supported case from Microsoft. Yes, I know. But how you can use it? What what is the scenario? I understood that there is a already existing tenant and there is already having a subscription. You want to use to create the LCS project and host the cloud hosted environment, correct? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you can do for that particular project, let's suppose you have ABC project. OK, and you already have uh, this is ABC project in LCS. Now what you can do, you have already X, Y, Z tenant. So you just create log in the LCS, create everything. All everything can be connected. This is the main project, so you can have your uh, UAT plus prod production and your development environments can reside here. Make sense? And even you can connect your DevOps to this tenant and also you can club your uh, uh, SharePoint also. You need to just uh, work on and uh, trusted resources like you need to invite them as a guest. OK, it, it okay. will work. Okay, yes, okay. and yeah, definitely we can uh, connect offline if you need more information. Uh, through the channels, we can definitely reply on that. Yes. So, any other Thanks. more question? Uh, uh, Richard, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Sandeep. Yeah. So, just to confirm my understanding also, Mesh. So, if we have to configure a Azure connector in your ABC project, then that Azure connector has to be to the tenant where the ABC project LCS is hosted, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, cool. So, thank you. Basically, yeah. Basically, when we talk about uh, the setup. This cannot be different than uh, so once we see that once we click on edit, let's suppose and we see that we need to enable this. OK, so this will only pop up with your uh, correct uh, tenant. Otherwise, it will give you the error. So definitely you can uh, type in your connector, but that definitely will not succeed because you might not have the access. OK, yeah. so yeah. yes, that kind of issues you will see. Right, so yes. Sandeep, one LCS project is linked to one tenant only. OK, um, there is another question. Uh, why do we need SharePoint in project settings of LCS? Uh, this is from Kishore. Yeah, so Kishore, what happens is uh, you might see that uh, there are a couple of uh, when you open uh, the um, project, uh, the complete uh, tier two or tier one. Once you open and you see there are office online settings. And there are a couple of files also that files and everything can be stored on this SharePoint. That's the reason uh, we need to map the complete uh, project settings perfectly. Thank you, Mesh. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, there was one more question from Arun. Uh, should the role always be contributor? Yes, R role should be always contributor. You cannot uh, decrease the role or uh, obviously increase is possible, but decreasing the role will definitely uh, be a problem. And the recommended is contributor. 
Okay, and if you are giving global administrator, then no problem. <laughs> Your issue can be screwed up any time. <laughs> cool, cool. I think Kishore has yes. some follow-up comment. Kishore, please feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah Kishore. Hey, hey, this is Kishore. Uh, so uh, when you said the SharePoint online, is it for LCS files or is it related to the D65 connecting to any SharePoint? Like if we download a uh, export to Excel and sometimes I see the SharePoint is not configured or some kind of error I see. Is that related to that? Yeah, so right now this uh, this SharePoint online library is uh, OK. I will just show you. That this is something wherein uh, it will uh, it will you can actually track your projects in one place and makes visible to the project users. OK, that's the main objective, but uh, when we talk about the uh, environments, then mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, that, that is uh, the online uh, documents. It is hosted on uh, uh, on the uh, on different uh, altogether a different uh, SharePoint actually. Yeah. So Kishore, I have shared the link where you have to configure document management within Dynamics instance. That SharePoint is used for used, document yes. handling. Yeah. Okay. So ma mainly so, that is for document handling. Yes. This is mainly focused on the project. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So your LCS documents or the environment documents is also stored on uh, the the SharePoint, but that's uh, the document uh, handling uh, part wherein you can directly use it. OK, I'll read this document. Thank you. Yep, welcome. Perfect. Thank you, Mesh, for answering those questions. Uh, yeah, I think you can continue. There are no more questions. If there are more questions, we can. Uh, yeah, I'm just about to yeah, left. Yeah. Sure. Yes, I'm about to finish. So this is all about the DevOps. I wanted to show the uh, configuration, the DevOps. Man, many questions has already already been uh, thrown to me about the configuration automation, but I think within eight minutes I cannot cover that. So uh, we will definitely have the uh, sessions. I am a volunteer over here, so definitely my follow-up sessions will be there. Now I will just show you one small automation wherein I have one uh, recently created. Uh, uh, the Power BI SSMS Virtual Machine 2. And uh, I think one of my colleague Tofi, uh, Toshiv has uh, installed this, uh, but a automation was not done. So I will just show you how a automation can be built. So we can go to the virtual machine. This this is the virtual machine in which I have not done the automation. Uh, the example in the screenshot, uh, this is different. I have already done it. OK, so what you have to do we all know that a auto shutdown can be performed over here so i will make it as turn on i will make it as uh, the uh, standard 5 pm to turn off and then uh, yes i need the notification so i will make it as omesh and then say save it so this is the one uh, auto shutdown to save the cost. Why the auto shutdown is there? We should be saving the cost on Azure. There are uh, the other options of the webhook. This is also can be configured, but this is the automation is towards the very minimal efforts. So go to the task, which is the uh, the in the preview. Just go ahead and say add task. So in the add task, what exactly I want to do? I want to actually start the virtual machine. So download up auto shutdown. You have done already. The power off is already done, but over here you can also do it, but we have already done. So I will be explaining how you can actually start the uh, virtual machine. Just say yes and continue. Just say authenticate. So it will ask me to connect. So I will connect it by the signing in. I will just uh, sign it outside my uh, because it has customer information. So I will just want to hide it from uh, everyone. OK, so this is how my user ID is connected and then I will say next configure. Now it is asking me that task name is this. I can make it. Uh, I, I can make it more sensible. I will just say start. 
sorry, it should be S T A R T. Okay, and then I will make it the time starting as uh, starting at around uh, nine a.m. Zero nine. Okay, and then the time zone. I will make the time zone as uh, okay, and time zone as the IST. I can't press I and see whether India is there. OK, can anybody see? OK, let it be. I will just say mountain standard time and the interval is one like I want daily start uh, startup and every uh, day frequency. I will just say frequency. I will just say on and I will say notify me with the my name Umesh dot. Uh, Maybe I will use my personal ID or the corporate ID. Give me a minute. I will just copy paste it. And just say create. So every time on the morning it will start and then. It will turn off at night. Auto shutdown will appear at the IST time zone. OK, so. Yeah, so by this I end up my session. Um, uh, I have done my uh, session for the day. If you have any questions, the floor is open and a, a big thank you for you to making uh, this success. Uh, you have taken your time and you are attending. So from the personal time, so that's wonderful. Thank you for that once again. Thank you very much, Amish. That was a really yeah. wonderful session, and uh, uh, I you. think we have more questions before we close the session. I think Ashish, you want to ask something? Hello, thank you, gentlemen. It was a very good session. Thank you, Omesh. Uh, just thank uh, you, Ashish. Uh, not a question. Just wanted to share an experience. I thought it is a little bit of worth here. So we had a project uh, in Australian region. Uh, and this is on the like uh, on an LCS. Normally, it is very tightly with one domain. OK, now what happened in this particular case is this project was already running into the US region and customer for some reason wanted to use the same project in the Australian region. And it is not easy. There are there are you have to go and reach out to Microsoft. Only then they can support one project into multiple regions. I thought I should just let the audience know. Yeah, that's very nice information. Thank you, Ashish. Thanks, Ashish. Yeah, it it's uh, really painful if you have to change talents uh, mid project or post go live. So it is something we should check uh, with the customers during project kickoffs. Uh, yeah. Cool, thank you. Uh, so I think there is one more question. Uh, which we missed uh, from Kunal. Yeah. Is the LCS configuration for SharePoint URL automatically populated in document management parameters, SharePoint online parameters? Umesh, do you have any thoughts around it? Yeah, so uh, the LCS uh, SharePoint is more, uh, more uh, towards the uh, LCS project only. When it comes to the document management, it is, it is not auto populated. You need to configure it manually. Thank you, Mesh. Hope that answers that question. Yeah, welcome. Cool. Okay, I think uh, um, we have covered all the questions. If you have any question further, you can connect with uh, Umesh. He's very active on LinkedIn and uh, other social platform Umesh, I think you also have your own blog. Yes, right. I think you're also very sure. active on that. So feel free to reach out to Umesh. Uh, he's a very friendly, very cooperative uh, person and uh, responds almost within a day. <clears throat> yes, thank right, you. So guys, um, 
we have upcoming session now on 12th of September. Uh, we will talk about uh, warehouse management overview from Prashant and Devashish. So warehouse management, you know, this is one of the most complicated uh, module of FNO. So I think this is the uh, right opportunity for you guys to learn and uh, share, share this uh, session with people who want to understand more in the warehouse. Right, and uh, for you guys, if you want to speak in these sessions on any of the D3 Sphere topic, this is an opportunity. We call upon everyone. Um, just scan this QR code and uh, you can submit your session. And if you don't want to speak, maybe you have some idea to make this session better, to make it more uh, fruitful for the community, then feel free to submit your uh, opinion, your views or your rating maybe in general. Thank you very right. much, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Satya. Thank you, Rachet. I would be very keen to see if somebody can ha have an opinion about how to support Git on, ABS, on, on the LCS. Uh, that's the area. I, if somebody can propose, some, that would be really good. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Ashish. Point taken. Uh, we are actually working on that. So yeah. it's on the pipeline. Yeah. That would be great fun. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Parish and Rachit, if you have any closing comments, then definitely thank you, Mesh, for this uh, wonderful session. Yep. Welcome. <clears throat> yeah, just to reiterate, um, so this session was recorded. It will be available on the YouTube channel. Everything that we have said uh, will be uh, available in the links, and definitely you can always contact Mesh. Uh, on through the through the groups so um also uh, since ashish mentioned uh, we are also in the process of putting up um you know request forms so you can always request for the topics and we have been receiving it uh, so that we can see a pattern if there is a you know a large chunk of requests we can always take that uh, prioritize that as well uh, so do register for the event and look out for the next sessions in in the group thank you Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, guys. Thank good you, evening. Thank you everyone, good night. Guys. Yeah. Have a good week. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah.